Hey everyone, this is Josh with a fun computer science tutorial for you today. In this video, we're going to be talking about a couple simple text data formats for software developers. So if you're a new coder or an experienced coder working with data sets for the first time, we're going to talk about how uh, computers actually can store text format in a logical way that a program can parse out and use that information. If you're dealing with very large or very complex data sets, the best way to work with that information in a program is to use a full database engine like a MySQL, MongoDB, or even SQLite. Uh, but in, in our case, we're going to talk about simple flat files. So ways of structuring our data that it's easy for a program or even a human to understand on some level and just stored in a simple file on our drive. So we're going to talk about three kind of levels or three types of flat file text formats that are pretty common for software developers to use. Now, the first type that we're going to talk about is a simple uh, tabular or table-based uh, way of storing data. One of the most common formats is CSV or comma-separated value. So for this, we have a simple text file and we have a uh, header row that has sort of information about what each column contains. So let's say, for example, we want to store a training log for a uh, jujitsu practitioner. Uh, we might have the date, location, drills, and rolling. And then in each row, uh, we have our information. So we have the date of our training session, where we trained, what drills we worked on, and, uh, you know, some things that we encounter in our sparring. And for this information, each column is going to be separated by uh, what we call a delimiter. So in a comma separated value, uh, each column is separated by a comma. You can also have tab separated value files or really any logical delimiter uh, as long as your engine is able to parse that out or your software is able to parse that out. CSV is great for simple tables of information. So again, something like a training log uh, where we have you know, a logical set of columns that each row is going to uh, contain as far as information goes. But sometimes we want to store information that's a little bit more complex. And so a next uh, common type of text storage format that coders use is a key value store. And a very common format for this is JSON, um, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, YAML is another very common format that's also a little bit more compact, but follows a similar logic to it. So for this type of format, as sort of stated in the type, we have a key and then some value. So let's say, for example, we want to store a couple different files of information about resistance training exercises, like strength training that you would do in the gym. Uh, we could have uh, one file that contains information about body weight training progressions. So for our key, we have name, and then we have a value of dips. And here we can store something that's a little bit more complex. So for our progressions key, we actually have a list value of uh, different uh, progressions of the dips from easier to harder. So some type of supported dips, regular dips, ring dips, and there's all sorts of variations that you can do. Maybe we have another file uh, in our little resistance training program that contains uh, barbell or free weight movements. Uh, we have something like the category as the, as the key and uh, lower back exercises as the value. And then we have movements and the deadlift, for example. So we can sort of structure our data uh, in a way that's a little bit more complex than a simple table. So we could have just a simple key value pair. We could have a key uh, whose value is actually a list of lots of different um, values. Or we could even sort of have subsets where you could have a key and then another dictionary that contains different levels of keys, values, and lists. Um, this is very similar to a, the programming data structure that we call a dictionary or a hash map. 
Um, and this just allows us to give a little bit more complex structure to our data in a format that's still pretty uh, simple and compact. Now sometimes uh, another form of text storage that we can use, which can allow for these complex structures, is a markup language. So this would be something like XML or HTML. Uh, in this example, we're going to talk about HTML, which is the language of uh, internet websites. Uh, HTML is a particular form of a markup language that specifies what the data in a web page will look like, what it will be rendered as on your page. So let's say, for example, we, are, we want our web page to display a table of uh, rock climbing grades and how uh, different systems compare. We have these tags uh, that contain sub-tags in them that sort of define the structure of our data. So we start with a table tag, and that tells our web browser, hey, we have some text here that we want you to render as a structured table. And then we have a TR tag for you know, table row uh, and table headers underneath that row. We have another, so we have sort of our headers here, similar to what we have in CSV, our Yosemite Decimal System, and our bouldering V scale. And then we specify a table row with these individual data points, like 5.9, V0. Now, in this particular case, this is a very simple example of HTML that looks similar to CSV. But markup languages are really great at specifying uh, a fairly complex data structure. Right, you could again an HTML web page or an XML data format for some complex business data set. This gives you the most amount of flexibility, but it's also sort of the hardest to work with. If you're the person creating the, the data file or um, writing a library to parse out HTML or XML, the downside is this allows a lot greater complexity, so it's a little bit harder to work with when it comes to programming logic. JSON or YAML can be a little bit more complex, but generally simpler than XML. And something like CSV is the simplest data format to work with. So when it comes to choosing a data format for a program, at least in my opinion, you kind of want to use the simplest one that works. That's going to give you the least overhead in terms of uh, the complexity of updating your data set, the complexity of reading your data set, dealing with any errors that you might encounter when parsing out your data. It really just depends on the level of complexity of that data that you need to work with. Uh, storage uh, format size can come into play too. You know, the more compact the data format, the less space it's going to take up on disk. So this is a matter of preference, and it's a matter of what your data looks like. And I just wanted to do this tutorial as a brief introduction to how programmers work with text data. It's very interesting and something we sort of take for granted as day-to-day -day users. You can pull up a Word document and just see text on the page, or you can pull up a web page and see that information without necessarily seeing what goes on behind the scenes. But as coders, as software engineers, as computer science geeks, we sort of want to learn these things and maybe this will help you with your next coding project that involves some data. So as always, I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative, and thanks for learning something new with me today.